What a week it's been. Chaos and death in Iraq, political upset at home. Poverty, inequality, and as always, shootings and more shootings. In recognition of that last fact, right now we're going to have a little change of format here at the top of today's program. For the moment, ladies and gentlemen, we are not the Zero Hour. We are America's drive-time radio station with all the information you need all the time. That means news on the ones, traffic and weather on the threes, and shootings on the tens. I just gave you the news. For traffic, this week saw the usual jams in big cities around the country as we continue our planet-killing addiction to oil. As for weather, it was hot and humid in much of the eastern half of the country, a condition which will keep getting worse because of our oil addiction, with more of the same expected for next week. And as long as we're talking about more of the same, that must mean it's time for today's gunfire report. Here we go. Shotgun fire broke out Saturday at a university in Seattle, Washington, killing one young person and injuring three others. In a common pattern, the shooting the shooter had previously been identified as dangerous, in this case by himself. The killer called 911 four years ago and said he wanted to hurt himself and others. He was involuntarily committed after he said that he, quote, had a rage inside him, end quote. Nevertheless, he apparently had no difficulty obtaining a deadly weapon. In addition to a shotgun, the killer had a knife and many additional rounds of ammunition on his person when the shooting took place. Saturday also saw a loose gunfire event in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. While the details are not yet fully known, the event was apparently the result of another common pattern in which freely available firearms mixed with criminal activity, the instinctive human tendency towards warlike territorialism, and the overconsumption of alcohol and recreational drugs. As a result, gunshots broke out at a block party in Monk's Corner. A teenage girl died and several other people were wounded. Police say that at least seven different guns were used in the shooting, leading to a heavy and unexpected rain of bullets on the otherwise festive and sunny outdoor event. Sunday brought gunfire in Las Vegas, which began at a pizza place before coming to a head at a local Walmart. The dead numbered five in total, including the shooters themselves, a bystander, and two police officers. That shooting was the result of another common gunfire phenomenon, which develops as a result of ongoing and extreme right-wing fanaticism. The orphan count for that incident was four children left fatherless, all of them from the families of the slain police officers. One of those children was a baby who will never know her father. Tuesday saw munitions build up at an Oregon high school. Artillery included an AR-15 type rifle, a semi-automatic handgun, nine loaded magazines bearing hundreds of rounds, and a large knife. There was moderate bullet precipitation resulting in the deaths of two young people. According to a recent study, that shooting was the 74th time since last year's Sandy Hook massacre in Newtown, Connecticut, that a firearm was discharged inside a school building or on school grounds. Many of these incidents undoubtedly involved inner-city schools, where gunfire outbreaks appeared to receive significantly less attention from broadcast news organizations. But here's an interesting fact that not all our listeners may know. Experts say that the level of parental grief experienced in these urban incidents is actually equivalent to the grief experienced at wealthier and whiter suburban schools. You may not have known that. The week before last, of course, was the week that we saw heavy gunfire rain down on the town of Isla Vista, California. To keep abreast of these daily developments and shootings, stay tuned to this station where we give you all the information you need for life in today's U.S. of A. That's news on the ones, traffic and weather on the threes, and shootings on the tens. The forecast for next week, more of the same. I'm Richard R.J. Escal, and this is The Zero Hour.